Okay. Uh, welcome everyone. And thanks uh, for the great introduction, Trish. As Trish mentioned, my background is in recruitment and I now work as a career services specialist at the Round Rock campus. And I definitely have a interesting mix of background, both because I was uh, getting back to the workforce after 10 years of gap. And I had to literally teach myself everything about job search, including resume, LinkedIn, networking, salary negotiation. And then I became a recruiter and I learned some more information about all of these different things. Um, one important thing about thing about LinkedIn is that a lot of time as a job seeker, we assume that LinkedIn is, you know, maybe not as important as a resume, but as you... Uh, get more experience, get into a professional career. Uh, just be aware that a lot of time, for example, as a recruiter, uh, even if someone did not include their LinkedIn profile on their resume, I used to go and search those people by their name. So as you grow in your career, as you get more experience, um, slowly try to create a LinkedIn profile, which is both optimized and has a good number of connections. So with that, I will get started. So why LinkedIn? Um, LinkedIn has a current user data user base of 1 billion professionals. And these are people who are spread across the globe, obviously not only in US. Um, and that makes it very interesting because you can create a profile, you can complete your profile, and you can network with people who are either local to you or are in the same industry locally, nationally, and globally. And how do we get the best out of it? Um, actually, before that, uh, I know that we have a couple of uh, students also joined. So I would like to know so that I can tailor this presentation to wherever you are, could you please share in chat where are you in your LinkedIn journey? So please put zero if you don't have a LinkedIn profile and that's perfectly fine because we are here to help. And you can put one if you have a LinkedIn profile but you are not actively using it. And if you have a LinkedIn profile and you're active on LinkedIn, then please put two. So I'll give... Um, it a couple of seconds so that we can see what our students are saying. Okay. So I see one meaning that you have a profile but not actively using it. Okay. Not that. Yeah, sure. So that is great. I can tell you more about how do you leverage it. And in fact, I have a, a slide later on which talks about, uh, which is about a demo on certain. Um, things we can see how it works on LinkedIn. Okay, my slides are not got it. Okay, um, so we were talking about the importance of LinkedIn. Like resume, LinkedIn is also important. But the thing is, you can sit and you can get your resume done in one hour or one day. But LinkedIn needs some effort to do it right. So I, I say that take your time. Don't rush through it. Take your time, complete one section at a time and start connecting with people so that you have a network where you can find great jobs, you can find good people and you can get a lot of information. Um, we, uh, the Career Services Department, department is also on LinkedIn. So... Sandy will share the link later on um, where you can find us on LinkedIn and you can follow us to see the most recent update about what are we posting and what's happening in career services. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, LinkedIn has 1 billion users globally and employers, as I mentioned, use it to find and vet candidates. So uh, when I was a tech recruiter till last year, LinkedIn was my most preferred platform to source candidates because first of all, I find great candidates. And second of all, it was 
so simple to vet these candidates because I can go on their profile and try to understand what they have done. Um, I get to see their most recent picture. So I know they are genuine and not a fake profile because in this world of AI, it's very easy to create fake profiles, right? And then it also helps me uh, as a recruiter or as a career services specialist, get a lot of networking opportunities and find a lot of people who are in my target networking group. Starting uh, on LinkedIn is very simple. Like any other, let's say, if you have created a handshake account or any email account, you just start with your email, phone number, and a password. And LinkedIn is user-friendly in the sense that it prompts you to go to the you know, complete the next section and the next section, next session. So it just, um, it's just easier for you to complete all the sections because it nudges you if something is incomplete and when it's complete, it tells you that your profile is 100% complete and then you can start adding people. Um, once your profile is 100% complete, LinkedIn gives you this all-star badge that tells you that, you know, the profile section of your profile, the information about you is done and complete. And then you have the opportunity of finding like-minded people and adding them. And we, when we go to the demo section of this presentation, I'll show you how you can find more people and how you can connect with them. Um, this feature about open to work um, has been recently discussed on LinkedIn a lot. Some people said it's a good thing. Some people said it's not a good thing. In my opinion, open to work logo or banner uh, makes it easier, makes it easier to find uh, candidates who are open to work. And that makes recruiters life easier because on the back end, when I use LinkedIn to find people, there's an option where I can click uh, to show the profile who are open to work. So if you have set up open to work banner, um, it shows to the recruiter and they can search by open to work, people who are open to work. So for example, let's say I am a job seeker. I'm looking for work, but I have not selected this open to work banner. Uh, in that case, if someone is looking for someone like me, they would not be able to find it through the search because I have not turned it on. So if you turn it on, it is easier for the recruiters to find you and connect with you. Um, you can search for jobs and you can search for people uh, in the search bar. And you, if you're looking for jobs, you can also easily set up alerts. If you have used any other job portal, let's say Indeed, um, Handshake, Dice, or Monster, you know that when you are looking for a job, uh, let's say you put software developer and you can set up an alert based on that same search. So whenever that kind of a job is posted, you get an automated email saying that this job is posted by this company, right? So LinkedIn has the same feature also. The benefit of LinkedIn as compared to the other platform job portals is that not only it lets you search for jobs, it also let you network with people. For example, you find you found a job and you see that this job has been posted by this person. It's just so much easier for you to apply for the job and immediately reach out to the person who has posted the job. That way it helps you in networking, not only applying for jobs. So I'll, uh, I will stop here for a minute and see if I have any questions. Um, if not, then I'll move on to the next portion of the presentation. Okay, I don't see any questions coming in, so I'll uh, move on to the next section. 
okay most interesting part um for me at least because i get to you know uh, do a demo of what these things look like on a real profile so i have created a student profile just for the demo purposes and um, all the things that i'm i have mentioned here i can show it how it looks in action and hopefully that would help some of you in creating similar sections on your own profile and also <clears throat> uh, all the things that i'm going to tell you more about if you have any questions anytime during those you know sections please put it in the chat and around the end of this section i'll go and uh, check for those questions okay so let me stop sharing and let me share my linkedin profile And while Schwada works to get that profile up and running, I'm just going to open up the mic and see if anyone has any questions so far. Not yet. Well, do feel free and feel comfortable to ask questions. This is a learning opportunity for everyone. Um, if you already know this about LinkedIn, you can let us know, but it's a good opportunity about for Schwada to demonstrate from a beginner's perspective how to get started on LinkedIn. So she's got her screen up now, so I'll stop talking and hand it back to Schwada. Thank you, Krish. So uh, this is a profile I created recently, and this is uh, you know for the demo purposes to explain how uh, a profile which has been completed looks like, and then what would be the next step. So some of you mentioned that you are one which means that you have a profile but you have not started using it actively or um, you're not leveraging it for job search and networking right so i am just trying to um, show the different sections that have been completed and then we'll talk about more about how you can find the people to connect and how you can actively use the features that are available on linkedin one thing that has happened recently on linkedin is a lot of things uh, there are a lot of things which have been available which are not only available to paid users which means if you have a linkedin premium you get to use those features for example earlier uh, on linkedin when you use try to connect with someone it was it was a uh, there was no limitation on on a number of connections you can send with a personalized message but now with a free account, there are only five messages per month that you can send with where you can include a note, but you can send many more messages where you cannot include a note, which is okay. Um, but if you can, I would highly recommend using the premium feature, at least um, do the trial for a month because one month trial is available and you know you can, continue or you can discontinue after one month but the linkedin premium would let you use some of the features which are not available to free users and also it lets you complete some uh, linkedin learning courses for free if you have a premium subscription that way if there's anything that you wanted to you know learn uh, in a short course one hour course that would be a reason for you to uh, use the linkedin premium okay so uh, first thing about this profile, you know, starting from the top, um, I hope you're able to see the URL of this person. So when you create a profile for the first time, LinkedIn gives you these random numbers and letters at the end of your profile. And the problem with that is if you take this link and you put it on your resume, it's first of all, it's a very long, long link. And second of all, these random numbers and letters don't look good, right? So LinkedIn has given an option to optimize it, but that's not a default. So what we can do, um, you can do is you can click on this pencil and that actually opens another tab. Um, let me see if you're able to 
see it. Otherwise, I'll share again. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. Um, I'm not sure which tab is visible. Okay, let me stop sharing and share the new tab. Okay. Yeah. You might want to share your entire screen that way when you open new tabs. Okay. They all show. Okay. So let me try that. Share the screen. So, okay. Here I am. So this opens a new tab. And in the new tab, you'll see the pencil in blue. If you click on the pencil, you can remove these numbers at the end by deleting them and then save them. And when it's a success, I have updated my link. So if I go back, if I refresh that, it should um, show it. It's not, but I am sure if I log in, I log out and log in, it should be visible to me. So that is how you, um, that is how you, okay, now it's optimized. So you don't see those random numbers at the end. So now if I use this link on my resume, it looks way better than it used to look when they gave me the default link, right? So that would be our first step starting from the top. And then a profile picture, which is professional and front facing. This is a, a stock photo I got from internet, not, uh, not the perfect one, but this was close to perfect that I could get for a demo profile. So here we are, but the picture, uh, you know, obviously smiling, um, approachable, professional clothing, neutral background. Those are just the basics. And uh, you can get a picture, you can get a LinkedIn photo done at our CNT center so that you can update it on your profile and you can start using your LinkedIn profile. Um, second thing I did was I added this banner because this comes like blank blue page. Uh, since I have created a student profile, I created a, you know, uh, background of the college, you can choose other backgrounds which are relevant for you because there, if you, let's say you are a you know computer um, science student, you might have other backgrounds that you can select. Okay. Um, second thing is that, you know, LinkedIn gives you 220 character space to uh, write about you, basically your headline. And um, I see a lot of times is people just write student at ACC or, uh, you know, just one or two word descriptions. I have created a description for this student that I'll go and update and then I'll show you how that makes a difference. Because when someone, as a as a entry level or junior professional, uh, we would like to give as much information as possible to people who are seeing our profile. So I'm updating this. And now you see it says, you know, uh, this person is a current student at computers, uh, in computer science at ACC. And what are they looking for? What are, what are they doing? What are they looking for? And what do they have experience in? That is that gives me a much better idea if I was to connect with this person uh, so that I can help them or at least I know uh, if I know someone, I can introduce them. But instead of writing student at ACC, uh, if you give more information, it is ultimately going to be more helpful to you. And Shwada, do you mind? I'm going to challenge you a little bit. Do you mind um, editing that again and showing the AI feedback? That's a fairly new feature on LinkedIn, and it actually is very helpful if you're struggling to write your headline or you need some um, information, you can type out a uh, example of what you want and then select the AI, scroll down a little bit more when you have the intro, there mm -hmm. we go, click well, in there and say get A, yeah, oh, that's only that's with premium, premium. oh, that's I forgot, premium. so sorry, yeah. no if problem. you have a premium account, that's another yeah, good, yeah. good tip, Think another good to reason to get that to free get that. first month, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, to tell you the truth, uh, Trish, I have tried for my own like real profile. It did not give me a lot of insight. 
So I think it's still a work in progress, but uh, you know, if you know as a student, if they know that what are they looking for, um, it's very simple to write about, okay, what have I, what am I doing? What am I looking for? And what do I bring to the table? That's a simple formula. But thank if, you for that clarification. Yeah. Good, and good deal. But yeah, I, I do uh, a lot of times I'll show you in the next section. I do start um, some things on chat GPT or AI related suggestions, but then I improve them uh, to customize and make my own. And I'll show it it uh, in the section which is about section so i created this about section with the help of chat gpt i said something like you know i am a current student at uh, acc and these are the things that i know which i mentioned java javascript uh, html and css and then i mentioned i'm open to internships can you write me a short summary section and i mentioned my date of graduation so chat gpt created this section um, the first time it created it it did not include these you know transfer uh, this hard skill job related skills so then i manually went and entered some of the details to make it more customized for my need so i think for starting off and inspiration uh, leveraging chat gpt is a great idea but at the same time i would like to warn you guys that sometimes it just throws out very generic and cookie cutter responses. So you need to, you know, read it and then customize it to your own need so that you don't sound like everyone else because obviously everyone else is also using ChatGPT. So um, we covered the title section, trying to give as much information as possible to our readers and people who are connecting with us, um, writing a about section. There's much more space they have given uh, if you want to list things about you you know things about um, your background things which are interesting what made you interested in um, this kind of profession you want to share your story and your journey you have a lot more space to write for the demo purposes I just wanted to create a very short um, introduction about the student so that I can show you what it looks like and a lot of people would say that it's not a good idea to use emojis on LinkedIn because emojis are meant for more casual conversation. In my own usage, I do use them randomly. Like sometimes I use in my post, sometimes I don't. But I think we are trying to set ourselves apart. So using some emojis is not as bad, but it also depends on the personality of the person who is creating this profile. Okay, um, moving forward, I have added a job and I have added four bullets about what I did in this role. Um, I have tried to quantify the work that I was doing because uh, you can, you know, obviously go very generic, but the problem is when someone is trying to read, they're trying to create a picture in their mind, a story about you, about what kind of work you have done. So it is always a good idea to give as many specifics as you can. So what was the volume of the work? What were your responsibilities? What were your the tools that you use, tools and technology? And what were your accomplishments? Those are the four things that I would suggest job seekers to add in both their resume and LinkedIn so that it helps the reader understand the quality of work that you have done in the past. And as you might know that um, keyword optimization is important, both for your resume and LinkedIn. Even though it's a very heavy sounding word, keyword optimization is very simple. What it means is to sprinkle keywords related to your target role in different places in your resume and LinkedIn. So for example, if we go back to this profile, we have optimized for keyword in multiple places. For example, this was a keyword optimization. You can also add you know, CSS and HTML that I have added in the about section. So that is the first place for keyword optimization. The second place was uh, in the about section. The third place would be in job if you have done something related 
to computer science. If not, then you can optimize for keywords here in your education, which I have done. So I have added all the keywords here also. And the fourth place um, you can optimize for keyword is going to be the skills section. Interestingly, uh, LinkedIn used to have allow 50 skills to be added. And now uh, last one month ago, they have made it that you can add 100 skills. So don't need to go 100 and don't need to, you know, worry about it. But I would say start with 15 to 20. So I started with 14 skills that I could think of. And, uh, you know, if this was my real profile, I will I would go every week and optimize it a little more based on what I learned in the class. Maybe there was a new course that I took, right? I can optimize for that keyword and put it in multiple places again so that it's visible at, in multiple places in my profile. Uh, another way you can optimize for your keywords is if you ask for recommendations, let's say from your professors or if you did an internship, if they can write a recommendation on LinkedIn, you can tell them to specify what kind of things you want in your profile, like in the recommendation. So they can also write those, include those words, uh, which will act as keyword optimization for your profile. I stop here. Is it, um, is it too much information? Is it helpful? Do you guys have any question? We have a bit of a quiet audience today. Um, John came off mic. John, do you have um, some input? Yeah, I, this is all great information because um, I've been out of the loop at link with LinkedIn for a while. But um, I was curious about the headline banner. Like, so currently I'm not employed and I'm not in school. Um, what would you would you suggest? Like, just leaving that that part out of it and just go straight into what I'm seeking for a job and what I'm experienced in or? Sure. So, um, John, I'm not sure if you would be open to sharing the LinkedIn URL, your LinkedIn URL, and I can give you a quick review. Uh, after seeing where you have worked at, I can suggest. Are you open to that? I could. I actually haven't logged in in a long okay. time. I'm just okay. starting my job search right now. Okay. But, uh, do you think I'll be able to find you by your name? Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. Okay, sure. And we might want to stop recording, um, Shwada, or we can okay. hold and do this after the session where you can look at that. But if okay. you have some general advice you could give him about how to optimize the headline when you're not currently employed or not currently in school, okay. um, are there tips you can give him about maybe optimizing some of his past experience? That way we don't share something too personal. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So let's say, uh, let's say I was out of work, right? I was not in this job and I was also not studying. I would still uh, mention the job that I held in the past. So for example, uh, let's say I was not, I did not come to career services. I was still working as a recruiter. I lost my job or my contract ended. Uh, I would still call myself a recruiter and I would still optimize for the most important keywords here. I would say recruiter, recruitment coordinator, sourcer, and then I would specify more about, let's say, tech recruiter, right? Um, and I would say I have worked for Fortune 500 companies. So those things don't go away just because I have a career gap. Those things um, I have already accomplished, right? And then okay. last sentence I would add would be most probably open to new roles or open to new roles as X, Y, Z, right? That is one level. Second level would be... Uh, setting up this open to work banner and that way you know people recruiters and people who are visiting my profile would be willing i mean would be able to see it when you set up open to work there are two options so i can show that now so let's say uh, if i say open to work there would be um, it only shows to recruiters if i click this if it will only show to recruiters uh, and it will not give me this green open to work banner and it's only visible to recruiters who are using something called linkedin recruiter it's a recruitment tool 
uh, which they buy access to so that they can find resumes, right? So if I click this, this is visible to the recruiters when they search for someone like me. But if I click this, um, it is obviously visible to recruiters, but it's visible to my whole network. So if I was open to work based on whether I want to announce it to my network or not, I would set up either the open to work banner or just the open to work where recruiters are able to see um, that I'm looking for new job. And if you can, so for example, I was talking about the LinkedIn premium. Let's say you are not currently employed and not a student. I would also enroll in LinkedIn courses because with premium, one month of premium, the LinkedIn courses are free, right? So the most important ones that you think will help you leverage uh, that knowledge, I would register those and then I could showcase those on my LinkedIn profile, both in the courses section and also as a post. So for example, let's say I did the course, I can write that recent, I completed this certification or course and then one or two insights about the course. If you don't even want to write, let's say insights that you got from the course, you can still announce that I completed this course. This was very helpful in learning more about, let's say I'm talking about diversity. It was very helpful to learn more about diversity, right? So, and, and let's say you want to really leverage LinkedIn to find new jobs and um, get more connections, then I would be more active on LinkedIn every day because the more people vis who visit your profile because you're posting things, the, a lot of them might be recruiters, right? So for example, I have a student who is looking for a job and um, she has some experience in IT, but she got laid off and she's actively applying. I met with her yesterday and she was telling me that Shweta, the interviews that I'm now getting are only because of my cold outreach and networking. I have stopped applying for jobs, right? So mm -hmm. in current market, when everyone is going and applying for jobs, um, it quickly becomes saturated. It, so it should be one part of your job search where you're going on Indeed dice monster or even linkedin job board and applying for job but i would focus 90 uh, percent of your efforts on networking and linkedin is the first thing that comes to my mind when i think about networking okay i'll stop here uh sandra you wanted to say something um we have a question okay would you recommend using a professional break section during a gap mm. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure about it. So it depends. Um, what would you say? For example, a lot of times, um, if you, let's say, add a um, section about a break, I mean, recruiters are reading your resume. If you say that, you know, let's say this role ended in uh, March of 2024, I understand that you have a break, right? That dot, the recruiter is anyway able to connect. If you want to add the section about career break, I would leverage, I would add that section just to leverage and showcase what I'm currently doing during the break, right? So if you have something that you want to add because it has the option of mentioning a description about uh, what you were doing in the break, I would create this section just so that I can showcase that I was learning and I was, you know, maybe volunteering, maybe I was um, enrolled in school or completing a certification. If you have something like that to showcase, that helps to create this section. But just for the purpose of showing your break, I don't think this is helpful because we as recruiters anyways understand um, that you have a break because of the dates of employment that you have mentioned on LinkedIn. And also, having a career break on your resume is not a bad thing. It was maybe a, a taboo earlier, but with COVID, uh, career breaks are way uh, more common. And if you can showcase that you were upskilling or you have recently upskilled, um, that is what recruiters are more concerned with, that you are able to do the job that you're applying for. Does that help, Billy? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. 
Um, let me go back to my, okay. So we talked about the headline. We talked about vanity URL or personalized URL. We talked about profile picture and banner. Um, let's talk about the other things like what is the difference between following and adding someone? So there are some people, for example, let me, uh, this is my profile. So if someone goes to my profile, the first option they show, they see is follow. Some people have that because I have set it up in that way. Um, <clears throat> so you can, if you follow me, let's say, uh, you'll not be able to uh, message me. But if you connect with me, you can both uh, follow. Basically means that you are able to see what I'm posting and what I'm talking about on LinkedIn. And when you, if you add me, so basically you connect with me, then um, you can also see what I'm posting, but you are able to send me a message. But if you follow me, you're not able to send me a message, right? So that's the difference between connecting and following. And on the same note, I also want to talk about how do you, what is the right way of connecting with people? So on LinkedIn, you have, you know, when you click on connect, you see these two options, which is add a note and send without a note. Uh, if you add a note, first of all, there are five which are allowed per month. So um, you can, you know, you can say very simple. You don't need to overthink it. You can just say that, hey, I'm current student at ACC studying XYZ, whatever your course and degree. And um, I'm based in Austin. I would like to add you to my network on LinkedIn. As simple as that. But just a note is going to be really helpful. And when the person who receives your note, um, it's just easier for them to add you quickly because then they know why you are connecting and they have some background because not a lot of people like to add people who they don't know. So if you have an introduction, that is, that is a quick way of building trust. And there are people who add you quickly if you have added an invitation, uh, added a note. The only challenge is that it is um, only five invitations per month are allowed with your um, free account. You might get more with Premier. I'm, I'm not sure how many more those are. Uh, but obviously, the second option is, let's say you are connecting with a, co, um, with a classmate, right? Let's say I'm your classmate, you connect with me. You don't need an introduction. Then you just click on send without a note. And I'll receive a request. And you can let me know in class. Or I might just anyways click and accept it because I know you. So those are the ways, uh, two ways, without a note and with a note to connect with someone. Okay. okay. Um, any questions about that? Um, another question that I get very frequently is how do I find people to connect, right? So since you are an ACC student, I would say start with ACC. So um, I would go search in the search bar ACC and click on people and then I would connect with people. So you can see that, you know, you have you have so many search results, obviously, pages after pages. So you can start with one person at a time, let's say Ashley, right? So you can click connect and then you can add a note or you can send without a note. If you add a note, you can say, hey, I'm also a student at ACC and I'd like to add you to my network on LinkedIn and click send, right? Uh, that would be one way. If you have studied at other universities or if you have worked, for example, this um this demo profile I have mentioned Denny's so let's say if this person has worked at Denny's then I can go and uh, look at people and then I can connect with people on uh, in Denny's the people who are working in different positions in Denny's and then there are different obviously pages after pages 
of uh, that kind of result. Um, LinkedIn is restricting um, this person from seeing a lot of connection options because uh, this profile has only one connection so far. It's a new profile, right? So as you start adding more people, as LinkedIn um, finds out that this is a this is not a fake profile and this person has verified their email, then more options to connect with people will open up. Okay, any questions um, before I move on to the next section? Um, okay, so uh, there is, uh, and before I say this, don't get um, worried by the number I am going to uh, tell you, right? So for LinkedIn, 501 connections are the magic numbers. There are two reasons for that, right? So for example, let me show you if you if i go to my original profile um it says 500 plus connections so once you have 501 connections or anything above that it does not show you um, the number of connections this person has so for linkedin they have decided that for whatever reason that 501 is the threshold right right now i have close to 3000 connections but it took me close to 10 years to build those connections, right? Uh, so also LinkedIn uh, pushes your profile to more people in recruiters in searches if you have at least 500 connections. So let's say you have a profile, but you don't have those number of connections. Um, the algorithm is not really helping you. And if you need that help, um, slowly, you know, Every week, log into your LinkedIn profile, add few people. Every week, add few people. As you grow your network, then you will obviously get more eyeballs on your profile, but you will also be matched to more opportunities on LinkedIn when people are looking for you. And then um, we have quality over quantity. So since I mentioned 500, do not be in a rush to achieve the 500 number because I have done that mistake. And um, just to increase the connections, I added people who I um, who were not the best fit for what kind of role or what kind of industry I was looking for, right? So I would say, take your time, do it slow, add quality people and build a solid network that you can leverage when uh, you are more active on LinkedIn instead of trying to reach that 500 number quickly. So other than, you know, people who are working at ACC and Denny's, this person, uh, this particular student is a computer science student and they're looking for summer internship. I would also suggest reaching out uh, and connecting with people who are currently developers. Let's say we can start with junior developer, right? Um, people whose profile says junior developer, people whose profile says student, right? Those are um, junior level candidates you can start connecting with. And then you can also connect with, uh, let's say senior developers, developer, development manager, engineering managers, and all those things. You can also search by companies instead of searching for position title. So for example, people working at Dell, so, you know, these are the results that come in. So you can go by organization <clears throat> like ACC or Dell, or you can go by position. If you are a entry-level job seeker who is looking for internships or jobs, then connecting with <clears throat> university recruiters or campus recruiters, or they're also called early career recruiters. Those are also... Um, great people to add on your uh, add in your profile. So, university recruiters or early career recruiters or campus recruiters, that's what they're called, or in general recruiters. Sometimes they're not called these names, <clears throat> they're called recruiters, but they still do uh, these kind of campus 
hiring and hiring for internships or hiring for junior level jobs. Okay, so we did uh, talk about the headline where, you know, originally it said student at ACC and currently this is the headline that this person has. And the simple formula for that is um, what is your background, meaning your education and your skills or your experience and what are you looking for? Uh, so these are the two that I created and I have this one is even longer than the one I have already used which uh, because this included the graduating in fall so extra statement sentence still uh, when I used it on LinkedIn um, it uh, it was not 220 characters it was still less than 220 characters so LinkedIn has intentionally given us this big amount of space so that we can express what whatever we want to express in terms of what our headline needs to be so definitely utilize it so that you can include a lot of detail because sometimes you know when people are let's say connecting with you or reviewing your profile they might not have time to go to your about section and read the whole couple of paragraphs in detail but if you have optimized your headline it gives a very quick idea about what is this person about? Okay, I'll pause if you have any question. Hey, I was wondering, um, would you recommend, you know, after we apply for a job, would you recommend us reaching out to a recruiter and adding them to our network? Mm, yes, so... Now, reaching out might mean two things, right? And it can be done in two ways. First of all, reach out could be uh, in mail that we get on LinkedIn, right? And reaching out could also be connection request with a message. So, but either way, either it's an in mail or connection request with a message, I would recommend uh, reaching out to the recruiters. And I'll uh, show you if, if I can find an example. Let's say IT intern. So what used to happen, like, let's say when I was posting a job as a recruiter, there was an option, there is an option, still, still an option where I can hide my profile and not publish uh, who is posting this job. A lot of people do that. But, you know, there are a lot of people who don't do that. And the reason they don't do that is because they want to be found and they will be, want to be found and contacted, right? So let's say if I look for an IT intern position, um, some of the, for example, this first example, uh, IT intern, it has, they have tagged their profile to this job because they want to be contacted. So I would message them. And again, um, LinkedIn might give you a cookie cutter message, you know, um, with uh, the AI, um, but do your due diligence and include, make it more personalized because the problem is everyone is getting the same message. Um, LinkedIn is creating the same message for everyone who is contacting this person. This person is seeing the same headline and same messages over and over again. So try to be different and try to customize it according to your background and be uh, be more human, as you know, as you say it. Um, another thing is I am on this page. Um, some of the companies have an easy apply option. And some of the companies, if you click on apply, it will go to their website. Uh, easy apply is easier, obviously, but easy apply means that your resume is not going to their database. They just see it on the back end on LinkedIn. Um, and there's no hard and fast thing. I still prefer applying because then my information goes in their applicant tracking system and their database. Uh, then just sitting on LinkedIn and then once they close this position, they will lose all these resumes. But if you apply to this company, this they will still keep your information in their system even after this position is closed. So I would prefer apply as compared to easy apply, but I obviously I'd apply to both kind of roles. Um, but I think easy apply is not so much helpful for the job seekers. So again, this position also, this person has, you know, uh, tagged their profile. 
this role they have not mentioned who the recruiter is so wherever you see the recruiter i would say i send them a message and contact them thank you Moving on, um, and this is, okay, this is a second to last slide. Um, LinkedIn is not your resume, it's a social networking platform. You're, uh, you're, it's going to be more, uh, you know, your tone is supposed to be more friendlier than resume because you know, in resume we talk so um, formally. So LinkedIn is where you can show a little bit more of your personality, you can, uh, talk a little bit more about your story and your background and uh, and your interests and what made you interested in this field and those kind of things. So this is, um, you know, obviously a networking platform, but a professional networking platform. So we uh, sometimes I see posts which are very similar to what we post on Facebook. So just be mindful about the kind of things you share on LinkedIn because this definitely is not similar to what we share on Facebook, right? So social professional networking platform. Um, so less detail about jobs, but in a more conversational yet professional language, it's an effective way to showcase what you know, and it's a work in progress and not set in stone. So don't worry about where you are and what is you know not working. Let's just uh, do things one step at a time and since LinkedIn is so user-friendly, it anyway sends you nudges and it suggests you thing. Uh, so once you are, you know, checking in, logging into your LinkedIn on a regular basis, you will get a better hang of it in terms of how to use it in the best possible way. And uh, the last thing I want to share, if any of you have a LinkedIn premium, and this is a great feature. I don't have a LinkedIn premium. I recorded this when I had it. So I just want to play this very quick video, um, hardly a minute, I guess. And that gives you some idea about how to search for people who are currently hiding. And Shwada, you'll have to share with sound so we can hear it. So you may have to stop sharing. And when you share, again it's yeah, share so, with sound yeah so i have muted this because it was just keyboard uh <laughs> tapping sounds uh so it does not have any sound it's just a quick demo and i can explain it later on okay thanks for sharing that i'll stop interrupting <laughs> no problem. So what I'm doing here um, is basically, let me, I'll share again. But what I did was I searched Java and AWS and I searched on people. I, uh, I clicked on people and then I used see what is the next step. So when I searched for people, because I had premium on, it was, it gave me a button called actively hiring and I got 2,200 results um, of people who are currently hiring for that role. So if you do utilize, you know, this 30 day free premium, you get to do this. So basically just to summarize, I search for the keyword. So for example, let's say I have a candidate, I have a student I'm helping who is looking for Java and has AWS experience also. So I clicked on Java and AWS. I then clicked on people. Then there was a button where it was uh, showing me who's hiring. I clicked on button actively hiring, and then it shows me the uh, people who are actively hiring. But as you can see, if I search that now, I will, okay, I closed it. Um, I'll not be able to see that information. I had that because um, I had premium at the time of recording this uh, Loom video. Okay, I guess I shared a lot of information. Any questions that I can answer and I'm willing to stay back. Is that okay, Trish, if I want to stay a little bit more? Yes, I'm going to stop recording. Okay.